Hi everyone, this is Matt. Welcome back to my channel. Someone recently asked me in the comment section to talk about mental health and burnout after completing a challenging PhD program. So this is something I'm going to talk about today. This is such an important issue that so many of us face and I'm going to share with you some valuable insight into how to navigate your post-PhD life. If you are new to the channel, my name is Matt, I am an ex-academic, I used to be a supervisor and then I moved to industry and I talk about everything that is PhD and transition to industry related. So please subscribe to the channel if you want to hear more about these. Back to the topic. So first of all, if you've been suffering from mental health issues like anxiety, depression or burnout for quite some time and they are affecting your daily life, then you shouldn't be watching this video, you should be seeking professional help. Counselors and therapists can offer invaluable support and so many of us during or after our PhDs reached out to counselors. And it's absolutely okay and this is not a sign of weakness, it's a sign of strength. That you recognize that you have a problem and you have the strength to reach out to these people to help you. And my main advice here is that if you reach out to one counselor and you don't particularly like them, you don't click with them, reach out to more. It's very common for people to actually speak to four, five, if not more counselors before they find someone they can actually benefit from that they click with. Right, so having said that, if this is not you, then I have some tips for you on how to manage the initial stages of burnout and mental health issues after a PhD. First of all, acknowledge your achievement. You've completed a PhD, you're a doctor now. So few people can say they have a PhD. And we all know that it was, you know, hours and hours of your work, but you also know the stress that went into it, the blood, sweat and tears often literally that went into completing your PhD. You know, the sleepless nights and all of this. So do take a moment to appreciate all of your hard work, your perseverance, your dedication, your strength to get to this point. And as life goes on, you will meet new people. And I can tell you that as you will meet new people like I do, they will not have PhDs and they will be very impressed when you tell them you have one. And they will tell you things like, oh, if I had a PhD, I'll be very proud of myself. And, you know, I would find it so awesome to write my name every time. And I would just write, you know, DR in front of my name. People will appreciate your achievement. And right now you need to take a pause to appreciate it as well and now once you've done it you need to focus on resting and recovering so after years and years of such rigorous academic work now you need to give yourself permission to rest to relax and avoid jumping into new commitments into new jobs if you can. Of course, this depends on your financial situation but if you can avoid making new commitments and try to rest at least for now. As you are resting, you need to stay connected to your family and friends because feeling lonely, feeling alone will make your mental health so much worse. So definitely do reach out to anyone who is close to you and also find support network, find support groups. So there are so many other PhD graduates who went through similar experience who are also struggling with mental health or with burnout. So reach out to these people. There are various Facebook groups and Instagram groups where people talk about their experiences and also just, you know, share the thoughts and so on. So definitely join these groups and leave me a comment here as well. Tell me how your PhD was like and let's start a conversation in this way. You're doing all of this to make sure that you feel connected, that you're not alone. And this will definitely be a very important part of your recovery. Next, you need to think about your physical health. So as we know, physical health is very tightly linked to mental health. And in my own experience, if I don't work out at least twice a week, I go crazy. I literally just need to go outside, get some fresh air, get some sunlight on my skin and exercise. And on top of that, you need to maintain balanced diet. And my advice here is to avoid sugar and eat less carbohydrates. If you want to take it a step further, you can think of doing yoga, doing meditation or muscle relaxation exercises. Now, I'm not a big fan of yoga. I think I just don't have patience for it, frankly. But somehow I do like meditation. But I also have quite a few friends that don't like meditation. But you know what? Meditation is great, but there are alternatives to it. So let me talk about meditation for a minute longer. When you meditate, you breathe 
breathe in slowly, you hold your breath for a couple of seconds, and then you breathe out slowly. What happens is you generate pressure from your lungs exerting on nearby tissue, and this means you're exerting pressure on vagus nerve, which is just behind your lungs. Now, the vagus nerve is like an on and off switch for your parasympathetic nervous system, which is essentially a chill pill, a natural chill pill. So by breathing slowly and exerting pressure on the vagus nerve, you turn on the chill pill, which is, which is that sensation that your brain tells you when it is safe. So it is safe to eat, it is safe to sleep, it is safe to have sex, and so on, right? You just feel at ease. So this is what that breathing pattern during meditation gives you. So if you don't want to meditate, and you want to keep your eyes open and think about anything you want, then just breathe slowly, keep your breath in, so this will have the same impact on the vagus nerve, and you will also relax. Now, if even this is too much, the other thing that is really good is just exerting pressure on your chest with your hands, or when you're lying down, put something heavy on your chest. The same thing will happen. Slowly, as time passes, you will relax just from having that pressure exerted on your chest. And to be honest, I do it quite often. I just find it very comforting. As time passes by and you're getting better, you need to start thinking about the future. And what you need to do is you need to set realistic goals and realistic expectations for coming weeks and months. Because you can't just jump in into your new life, you know, get a new job and just reinvent yourself straight away. It will take time, so you need to give yourself weeks and months to do it and you need to give yourself some small tasks to accomplish. So that it feels like you have a goal in your life, you are going somewhere, you have a direction. And as you're thinking of your future, of your professional development, decide whether you want to learn more about your topic of expertise, maybe, you know, go to some conferences or join online conferences, read papers, all of that. If you think that you don't want to stay within academia and you want to go outside of academia, then you could watch one of my videos, which I'm going to link here or here, I'm not sure where I talk about 23 popular sectors for PhD graduates and you could potentially find something for yourself in that video. And then if you do find something for yourself, then go to LinkedIn, reach out to people who are already in this sector, talk to them and slowly build your support net. Of course, the way I'm describing this is take your time and do it slowly. And this is ideal. However, I do understand that we all have financial pressures as well. And I know a couple of people who actually got themselves very sort of simple repetitive jobs after completing PhD because they wanted something that was fairly easy, fairly simple, and they would still have money, some money coming in. So they were waiting tables, they become bartenders. These were just jobs that they had for a few months during that recovery period. Because they could go to work, they didn't have to think too much, they could just do their job, and in the end of the day, they had money to support themselves. As you're thinking about your future goals and expectations for the future, think about time management as well, because you don't want to drive yourself to the next burnout. And it's very easy if you decide to spend every day 8 to 10 hours looking for a new job, or learning something new all the time and feeling pressure that you have to learn this by specific deadline, by a specific date. So decide how many hours a day you want to spend on self-care, on relaxation, on job search, and on self-improvement. And it's okay if you start with these numbers being skewed largely towards relaxation and self-care, and then over time you'll start spending more time on job search and self-improvement, professional self-improvement, and so on. And then as you're transitioning to your new life, to the next stage in your life, you need to learn how to set boundaries, how to say no. Because after all, again, you need to protect yourself from these mental health issues and from a burnout. So learning to say no and setting the boundaries will make sure that you don't overcommit yourself. And also, you commit yourself only to the projects that align with your goals. And that's really important because you will only do the key things that are important to you. And you will also make sure by setting boundaries that you have time for other things outside of work. When I was in my PhD, I used to say, is the life after work? Which was really sad, but to me it was really true because doing a PhD was basically my whole life. I was spending so much time in the lab and then I was exhausted. And I really didn't have much energy to do anything else. 
So there was essentially no life after work. It was just work. By learning to say no and setting boundaries, you will learn how to stop working at 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock. And then you, you will make sure that you have time for self-care, for your hobbies, for social life, for sleep and so on. So definitely think about this as well. What are your goals and what you want to accomplish? And based on these, set boundaries. And then finally, you need to stay open to change. When we are in academia, it feels like we have to stay in academia and leaving academia is the worst thing possible. It's just shameful, isn't it? At least this is how I experienced this. And actually, it's okay to leave academia. There's nothing wrong with it. And we don't have to follow the same path. And certainly, you don't have to follow the same path as your supervisor and as some of your PhD colleagues who, you know, became postdocs and then, you know, became PIs. It's okay. It's not for everyone. That's the whole point. So definitely, if you do decide to go outside of academia, keep your mind open. Think about various possibilities. You can watch my videos on transition to industry. I released about seven videos on this. And stay optimistic because there's so much more than just academia. And whenever something doesn't work out in my life I tell myself okay there is something much better out there for me waiting I think this thing was good but I didn't get it so there must be something else that I haven't even thought about that is waiting for me and is much much better than this opportunity I just didn't get so stay optimistic I think that there is always something much better and I'm sure it's gonna be all right Remember that recovery from a PhD, from a challenging PhD, is going to take time, and that's okay. And prioritizing your mental health and your physical health is the most important thing. And, you know, it's a sign of strength to seek support. Whether it's professional support or not professional support, you know, with your, among support groups, friends, and so on, that's okay. It's a sign of strength. So do seek out help, do seek out support. And over time, it will get so much better and you will enter a new chapter of your life with that amazing experience of having a PhD, of all the skills, all the life lessons you've learned, and also of that new skill set of how to manage your own mental health, burnout, and you will take all of this to the next stage in your life. And as always, if you benefit from this content, please remember to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.